Hi book lovers, we have such an exciting video ahead of us because in the month of April a lot of new books came out and a lot of those books were actually quite anticipated by me and I thought it would be fun to include them all in here. So we have five new releases that I'm all going to read and I'm gonna tell you guys which of these new releases are actually worth your time. So let's see what five books I have here for you guys. The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. I am worried to go into this one because this is the second book for the cheat sheet. I hated that book so obviously I didn't jump for excitement when I knew this one came out. Then we have Wild Love by Elsie Silver and I was really excited to read this because I wanted to get into the Elsie Silver universe for quite some time. I thought, you know, we have a new series coming out because this is the first one in her new Interconnected Standalone series and I thought I'll just gonna go with this one and then at least I'll be up to date with this series. Then we have Funny Story by Emily Henry and I feel like so many people are excited about this book because her books are so well loved. I'll say that I love like her writing and I liked her books but I haven't been obsessed with her. However, I'm always intrigued with her new releases, King of Sloth by Anna Huang. And this is the fourth book in her King of Sin series, I think it's called. It's all interconnected standalone, so you can read one or the other without reading the whole series. But I've read all three other books and I've been highly anticipating this release. And last but certainly not least, we have Powerful by Lauren Roberts. So this is actually a novel in the Powerless universe. Is it called the Powerless series? I don't know, but Powerless is the first one. And here we're gonna follow the same timeline, but we have two different main characters. It's Adina and... I don't know if we just have Adina in here. Is it so? No, wait. No, we have Makoto. Is that the guy's name? Well, I'll find out. But we have Adina's story in here. And I thought it would be fun to tell you guys what I expect which books I like, you know, gonna love the most to the least. And then by the end, see if I was actually right, because I feel like usually I'm really good with predicting what I like and what I won't like. But in those videos, when I do any predictions, I seem to be wrong. So I thought it would be fun to do this. And the book I'm actually least excited about is, no, I'm not gonna lie, the rule book by Sarah Adams. It's because I really didn't like the cheat sheet. So yeah, this is more just because it was also a new release and I did want to give Sarah Adams the benefit of a doubt. So rule book is on the bottom. Then it's second to last, I think it's gonna be powerful, which seems so wrong because I'm so excited about this release. And I wanna say, besides the rule book, I'm excited about all these new releases, but I just think because it is a novella and it's quite short and going back to what already happened in Powerless, I don't know if I will love this book. Then in the middle, I put Funny Story by Emily Henry, because as I said, usually I read them, I enjoy them, but then also forget about them. So they don't really have a lasting power. Then the book I think will come in second place is What Love by Elsie Silver because I really enjoyed Flawless and I feel like everyone just loves her writing. I have high hopes for this book and I also know that Elsie Silver's smut scenes are always exciting so I think that's also one of the reasons. Oh my god, if you think about it, like both those books in the first and second place have like probably the most smutty scenes. Um, yeah, maybe there's a theme, but it's just my predictions. <laughs> so yeah, obviously in first place, I think it's gonna be King of Sloth by Anna Huang. And this could have been different if this were another book in her series, but I've been anticipating Sloan's book so much. Like Sloan is the kind of main character that I love to read about. Like, oh my God, I'm so excited for her story. So this for me had like five star potential. So you see this is my prediction and I haven't read all of them yet but I already know that it's not exactly like I put it here <laughs> again I wasn't right but there's been great and not so great books so let's just continue with this video and find out which ones are definitely worth your time I already started yesterday with the first book which is King of Sloth and this makes me happy on several levels because first of all the book only comes out end of April, I think the 30th, but I found it in a bookstore. I was so surprised and immediately went and bought it. And then while I was still browsing with one of my friends, one of the workers there came, was like, oh no, there can't be out already. And I was standing there with the book that I already got and was like, um, I'm leaving now. So yeah, I got this book a little bit early by accident, but yeah, I'm very grateful. I love Anna Huang's writing so much and I love her series. I mean, not all of her books work out for me, but in general, it's just always a quite easy time to read it. And we've got glimpses of this couple since book one. This is book four now. I feel like Sloan is the kind of male character that I tend to like the most, like someone who's a bit more 
cold-hearted, who is not easy to read, who doesn't want to be vulnerable, and the guy kind of has to like really peel back the layers to get underneath the mask. The thing that I can tell you guys is that this is a real slow burn. I mean, maybe I should tell you guys first what this book is about. So we have Sloan, who is a PR agent, and one of her clients is Xavier's dad. So Xavier's dad, Alberto, he actually hired Sloan to kind of keep an eye on Xavier. He doesn't want to have anything to do with his inheritance, with the company of his dad, but the dad also has cancer. And we start with Sloan bringing Xavier to one of the charity galas and she needs to do a bargain with him to bring him there. Therefore, she bargains with him to go on holiday, but the holiday is cut short by something. So that's basically what happened so far. And I think I just expected a bit more tension maybe, but since Sloan was described as someone I really like, or I always feel weird when I say I feel like I can relate to those characters more because I wouldn't say I'm like a cold-hearted person or anything, but I don't know, just someone who doesn't like to show vulnerability. I don't think I've read enough to really get a feel for her character. When you're in her POV, I don't think that these characters are described that well in this book. But yeah, these are just my initial thoughts. I mean, I expect so much from this book. It's definitely one of my most anticipated reads. Oh my god, I love how I literally just gave you an update and a few pages later, I'm like so in love with this book again. I feel like I gave you an update and I was like, oh, it feels a bit slow burny. Oh, I'm not so sure. And now I'm like, this is what I wanted. So I finished King of Sloth last night and I'm sorry to say, but I'm really disappointed. But that's not to say that this is a bad book. And I think sometimes, you know, when you have high expectations and they're not matched, then like it feels even worse to me that I'm disappointed than just saying, oh, this wasn't a good book. Because I don't know, I think I would probably give it a three star, especially with Sloan. I was so excited for her book and for her character. And I don't think that she delivered. To be honest, I feel like I know less about them than in the other books. I don't know how to explain it. I think that this book and the story had so much potential and it just didn't go there. I definitely felt the most detached from this couple and this book. And also this is the longest book so far in the series. And I don't know how you can have that many pages on a couple, but still feel the least for them. I think one of the reasons is that it had way too many side plots. Like all the side plots, I feel like took away from the romance. Like for both of them, they had so many different side plots. I think they should have just focused on Fuhrer and explained their character more. Yes, the romance was still in the forefront, but it didn't even feel like that it was the main thing because how the storyline with the romance was like, after 100 pages, it was kind of like, yeah, but what's the point? Obviously, it's Anna's choice where she goes with her stories and not everything can match. But to give you maybe an example, you know, Sloan is described this really cold person and she has difficulties with relationships and also for commitment. But the way they start their romance is like, there are no difficulties. What was also really mediocre, surprisingly, was kind of the spice in here. Like after the first scene, maybe it was all done. There was so much where they just talked about things happening, but they didn't show us. And again, I think there was just too much other plot stuff going on and I would have wanted to focus more on the couple. I still think it's a good book, it's just that I am really disappointed and I do th see where other people would like this book and I was the most excited about this book from all of them and I hope I have more luck with the second book I'm gonna read. And next I want to read Funny Story by Emily Henry. I am excited about this book but the thing is with Emily Henry I read all her books besides Beat Read but I still want to read Beat Read hopefully this year and I do like her stories but I don't really get the hype around her like how people say she's like one of her favorites or she always also wins the goodreads choice awards and i don't really get it to be honest it kind of feels like there is something in these pages that i just don't get i want to know what it is i love the cover this is such a gorgeous book i also i like big and floppy books so this is just right up my alley i also love the spine i must say her stories always seem so much fun so we have Daphne and Miles and they are both roommates and their exes are engaged. So Daphne's ex-fiance actually and Miles' ex-girlfriend 
are now engaged and they kind of want to make them jealous I think by pretending they're I don't even know dating or just have like a great time together but yeah I'm excited how it goes so let's start funny story together about to happen because I read the synopsis but I read the start now and wow like and just imagine like you being left after your fiance goes to his bachelorette part uh, his bachelor's party and he just realizing he's in love with another woman I don't know I could never ever imagine something like that happening to me that is so awful I feel so bad I feel usually like Emily Henry's guys are not described as these typical like oh he's just perfect like perfect body and just very driven or very successful and they're not really golden retriever either they're just a bit more normal (laughs) the way Miles was described so far I mean I've only read the first few chapters it's like why would I want him to be the hero? Like, I really hope that he has some good qualities to him. But so far, I don't feel anything from us. And I really want to because I'm already invested. Oh yeah, I read about 100 pages today. And I'm probably going to read a bit more before I fall asleep. But I wanted to update you guys because I have a feeling. And I don't want to jinx it, but I have a feeling that Funny Story might be my favorite Emily Henry book yet. Which is crazy, because also I wouldn't say this is a five-star read yet. We only get one POV here, so we only have Daphne. And I don't like the way she talks about herself and what she describes. And honestly, she says about herself that she's boring. And I'm not gonna lie, like her character so far kind of seems boring. I don't know if it's also because I just read uh, King of Sloth, which, you know, was in the world of billionaires and we had crazy events and everyone was rich and everything was just a bit over the top. And in here, everything is so mediocre. I really, really love this book so far. And especially the humor. I would have loved to have Miles POV in here as well. I guess have a good night. So I'm a bit more halfway through the book now and I'm loving it. Both characters have a lot of self-development they go through and they have a lot of potential to grow, especially Daphne with her way of like finding friendships when you're in your 30s and just basically starting over again. If you feel connected to that part then I think this book would hit even harder and I'm just freaking loving this really. It just it feels very raw and honest her writing. I love the banter in here, love how they communicate and I love the side characters as well. I think that's also a big part that I really really enjoy the side characters here and yeah it's just a really good book so far so ah, I'm really happy and I hope I can finish it up today. I just wanted to show you guys This book made me cry. I love this book. I have like this much left. And it's so beautiful. What they just said was so beautiful. And I just love this book so much. Oh my god, okay, very quick. I just, I finished the book and I love it so much. It's definitely my favorite Emily Henry book. Potential five star. I'm just, I, I'm still, I'm speechless. I'm still on my feelings. I definitely have to wait and sit to give you a bit more <laughs> thoughts. Initially, after just finishing it, I freaking love it. I freaking love this book so much. But also, I need something now that is not as emotional. I'm going to pick up Izzy Silver's book now. I think I want to read that. Okay, we have the next day and I wanted to give you guys more concrete thoughts on Funny Story. I think I'll just do it. I will rate this five stars. It didn't give me initially five stars and I think it's more that the characters are nothing I would usually enjoy. Like in here it's really the writing and the story that hooked me. And sometimes, you know, when something is a really good story, I love it for what it is, but it feels more like, you know, fabricated. And that's how I kind of felt with this one at times, which is why I was a bit thrown off or, you know, didn't have the initial five star rating. But honestly, this was just 
beautiful. I'm just a fan of Daphne and Miles. And I think also the side plots in here are oh, just so beautiful and also very relatable, honestly. And I think that's what makes her books always so good for a lot of people. I honestly wish we had like a follow up for this couple just to see how they live happily ever after. I want that so much. I guess also whether a story like this hits or not, depends on how you relate to what the characters go through. It makes it so much more impactful. Also something else I loved about this book was definitely the found family, which was so beautiful. And we also have a small town here. Like this is definitely worth your time. But also like this hit me so hard that it almost left me not feeling absolutely great. Like this is not a comfort read to me. Like this was also a bit painful to read. There's also beauty in pain, but I'm also happy to now go into the next book and hope that this will be a bit lighter. And I started Wild Love by Elsie Silver. I only got into the first 50 pages and I gave a little intro yesterday when I picked the book up at my bookstore. Sorry for this weird angle. I'm about to go to the gym actually. And I just got Wild Love by Elsie Silver, which is I think the next book I'm gonna read and I just looked into it and started it and I only ever read Flawless by her because I'm reading the Chestnut Spring series with a friend of mine and yeah we only got to Flawless but we really want to read the next one which is Heartless but I just saw that there's a map inside and it has like all the places it says the Essie Silver universe and I think it has all the places where you know the other books play in for example, Chestnut Springs, and it just really makes me want to read the whole Elsie Silver universe because I want to know what these places mean, you know? The map just sold me on Elsie Silver's universe. That's how you do it, authors. A map with your universe. Love that. <laughs> and I will say that I had no idea what this book is about. And already, like, why are all these books so long? Like, you know, a romance to me really can be done with 300, 350 pages. It doesn't need to be longer. I mean, sometimes it's okay and I want even more pages, but this one is also like 450 pages and already in the first chapters you get introduced to like the side plots and I don't honestly care for these side plots. I just want the romance. If I want like a lot of other things around the romance, I would read a fantasy. When you already start this book with like the side plot and not the meet cute then I don't want to say I'm annoyed I'm just a bit worried <laughs> that I have to go through a lot in this book that I don't care too much about I don't want to sound so negative I'm just giving you my you know raw thoughts here but I love the writing I don't think this will be a bad book because of that I think I will still enjoy this it could still be a five star honestly hi guys sorry for my messy look but I wanted to give you guys a quick update so I've read a bit more than 100 pages now of Wild love. And I have to say I have mixed feelings because I really want to love this book but I just don't so far. I think it's just the plot I really don't care about. I don't even know if I told you about the plot but it's basically about Ford and Rosie and they both for different reasons go back to the small town where Ford always spent his summer as a child or as a teenager and Rosie grew up there and Rosie's the little sister of West, who is Ford's best friend there. And Ford basically always had a crush on her and was always therefore a bit awkward around her. But also they have this like bickering going on. But since they both left the small town Rose Hill, they haven't seen each other for 10 years, but now they're both back. And Rosie ends up working for Ford, who's actually a billionaire and I think he's in the music industry and he also did a bunch of other things, but he wants to set up a new studio there and that's why he needs Rosie's help. And if that's not enough, Ford also has a daughter now that he didn't know of. It's actually his biological daughter. So when he was younger, he donated some sperm and his daughter found him now. She's 12 and she has a really shitty family situation and she needs a legal guardian. And that's why she asked Ford to basically step up and do that. And yeah, you also have that whole part now where he has a 12 year old daughter or is like a legal guardian because I don't know it's weird like he's the father but also he doesn't need to be the father because the girl had a father it's all very complicated and honestly for that whole plot line with the girl 
I just don't care for that. But besides the plot, what I also don't love in this book is the dynamic between Rosie and Ford. I'm just confused by their dynamics because yes, there's like siblings sometimes with their bickering, but also I just don't get whether she really liked him back then or she just thought he was annoying because he was the best friend of her brother and I don't know, it's really weird. Like I can't tell if they're rivals or like enemies or I mean, she says, I think, like, frenemies, but it's just so weird because also he set up a desk for her at his office and she was like, oh, no, I hate him for that because now I have to face him the whole time. And I didn't even know, like, is it a problem because you're too attractive to him and you don't want to face him the whole day? Or is it because you just don't like him? I don't know. It's just weird. Like, to me, it's not really clear how she sees him or feels about him. It's quite clear how she, he sees her. He's so awkward around her. Just when he says something, are you confident? I'm like, yeah, but that's not you. Like, you act so awkward around her. Don't understand his character, I think. And the thing is, I like the writing, but so far, yeah, just a bit mediocre. I'm a bit lost in this book, to be honest. Right, it's a bit later in the day and I wanted to give you guys a quick update. I'm a bit more than halfway through the book and I think my feelings haven't changed that much. Honestly, I don't like their dynamics at all and I don't think they're really gonna grow on me. The reasons why they can't be together, they all feel so childlike. If this would be like a college romance, then I would understand that. And I know that she is a bit younger, but also like late 20s at least and I think he is in his 30s so they just should act a bit more their age and the whole plotline with him being like the legal guardian of his biological daughter I also find so weird because I don't really understand is he like supposed to be like a father figure for her because yes he's the biological father but also you know he donated sperm to get like concert tickets you know the girl had a family or like has a family and I just don't really understand that whole plot line because everyone who like comes in and is like oh my god that's your daughter like you look so alike and oh my god she's so much like you and I'm like it's so weird to me it's just basically a story where he helps out a family that really needs help and it happens to be his biological daughter I don't know at least I don't really understand the whole plot line are we supposed to think okay he's gonna be like a dad dad now or just like a legal guardian like there's definitely a difference so I just realized I didn't give a final update for wild love it's a few days later and I finished this and this is gonna be a little rant because I did not end up loving it, not even liking it. So I think I would give this actually two stars. As I said in the other updates, I've been not feeling the couple. I didn't like their chemistry, I didn't like their dynamics at all. But I think the one thing that really annoyed me was every other plotline and the plotline with his biological daughter because that was just so strange to me how he basically took on a father role but this girl had a family and it's no spoiler because it's right in the beginning the reason why Cora is actually staying with Ford is because her dad died after a long illness and her mom got really depressed so she has no one else and she needed him as a legal guardian but not as another father. And I feel like this book wanted us to believe that, you know, Ford is becoming the new dad. Just the way they talked about it was almost like, did they forget that this girl has a different family and, you know, was raised by a different family and Ford has nothing to do with that. All he did was putting his sperm into a cup. When you use a sperm donor with your partner, you obviously want that the kid always thinks about this as her family, you know, that's the one who raises her. It's like adoption. I just didn't like how they kind of just brushed her family off. And I just want to give you like two examples where I think they are very insensitive to her other family. I mean, yes, he helps her out and I'm loving that, but I just don't like how they brushed over the whole aspect that she has a family that also raised her. Like one sentence that Rosie says to Ford is, but from where I'm sitting, she's the best thing you've ever done. Like what? No, you haven't done her. You know, yes, you masturbated into a cup, but also that other family, the other dad raised her. That is the person she is. And just because you share DNA is not your work. And yes, he did an amazing job taking her in. I'm not taking anything away from that. But, you know, having a daughter for a few weeks is not the same as raising her for years and loving her as if it's your own biological daughter. And I hated the way they talked about it. And also, obviously, it was supposed to be a temporary situation with Cora. So by the end, when he's very attached, he's kind of scared, you know, what will the future bring? It's Rosie who 
ask, you think she'll go back? Obviously she wants to go back to her family, like to her mother. I, I don't know. I like how he responded with, she's a good mom, a good person. Good people get clinically depressed. She'll recover and I'd never want to interfere with that. Cora belongs with her. I feel like it's even odd that they talk about this. Like, obviously you're not, like, yes, you share DNA, but her family who, you know, raised her and everything that is her core family and i find that so weird getting depressed is so horrible and if we would get the story of cora's mom i feel like you would be so scared that the actual biological father has your daughter now and you would be so scared of losing that and that they even talk about it i find just disrespectful maybe i'm the only person who thinks that but that just rubbed me the wrong way the only thing i did like was actually the writing so this is not the last book i'm gonna read by elsie silver so i'm just editing my little rant and i forgot to say what i also hated the third act breakup actually was another reason why I couldn't give it anything higher than a two star because I feel like they all forgot that they're all adults they all make their own decisions I mean I can't really talk about what happened because I don't want to spoil anything but oh my god it annoyed me so much I feel like she really overreacted and she was so mean to him for something where consenting adults made decisions and she didn't even had like all the facts the way she just talked to him and made him feel so bad what he did but again wasn't really him and everyone did their own decisions I just hated her in that moment and just felt like you know we needed the third act breakup and I wouldn't recommend it it was just really really not for me you know my thoughts about this book now and I would say pick it up with caution and you heard my warnings. filming this video it's actually super busy as well so i have to multitask a little bit i'm about to get ready for a friend's birthday dinner but i thought while doing that i could give you an update on the rule book because that's the one i started reading now and i'm a bit more than 100 pages in and i'm actually switching between like actually reading it and also listening to the audiobook i'm actually really bad at multitasking <laughs> let's try i'm also apologizing in advance that i might look here instead of the camera because here's my lovely mirror so i can actually see what i'm doing i think the rule book is actually the book that i was least excited about and honestly in the first chapters when they mentioned the whiteboard like the whiteboard if you read the cheat sheet you'll know like that already made me so mad <laughs> i was like no but surprisingly enough i feel like i'm always wrong with my predictions <laughs> I'm really enjoying this book like it's definitely not gonna be a five-star read because I don't love it but it's a fun read it's such a quick read as well I think that's what I really like about Sarah Adams books in general it's also dual POV to let you guys know what the rule book is actually about it's about Noah and Derek I want to say how oh, did I already forget yeah Noah no Nora and Derek and they dated in college but she broke up with him on one day didn't really explain why and they haven't seen each other in some years i don't know how many it has been but he's now a famous football player and he got an injury and he needs a new agent because his agent got sick so nora actually works at the same agency where he had his agent from and they were like oh you know we have this great upcoming agent she's still knew like he'll be her first client he doesn't know that it's her and when they meet and he realizes it's her he's like nope i'm not gonna work with you because she basically broke his heart and he just doesn't want to see her which fair enough honestly but because she really needs a job she kind of convinces him to take her on but also he sees it for a way to do revenge on her so basically we have a second chance romance here and i know that a lot of people like second chance romances i'm not one that particularly seeks them out but if they're done well i don't mind them but in this case like it would be smart for derek to move on like she really broke his heart and also the way she broke up with him like to me if you're so in love with someone that's just not how you treat those people also the way she like treats them so casually at the beginning when they meet i'm like oh my god girl you broke his heart and i feel like she would need to do a lot of groveling for the reader to feel like yeah it's okay because so far i don't know she hasn't really done anything and 
he's the one that's still hung up on her like oh my god I hate this friend group like on the one side they're all funny and they're like found family and it's so cute but also the way they're in each other's businesses like if a man for example tells you he doesn't want to date and you're like yeah but we want to set you up and like find your happiness and everything like what message does it send to people like you know you can be single and okay I really hated that at the beginning how they were like oh you need to date to be happy like no and also later on when the guys find out that Nora is his new agent they're like oh, oh my god do you want her back do you still love her like we're gonna do a game plan and we're gonna do this and that and he's just like no I like need to get over her you know she like really broke my heart and I just can't deal with that and I think Nathan is the one who says like oh no you're doing the wrong decision you want her back I'm like if you would hear that about your best friend and to me what Nora did there wasn't a real excuse where you were like oh yeah they that person didn't have a different choice or anything then you wouldn't advise them to go like straight back with that person and i think i sound way more mad at the book than i actually am it's just that it's not like the perfect setup for me for romance yeah but i feel like that is always the tricky part with second chance romance that trust was broken in some kind of way if it's like right person wrong time that's maybe different but i feel like in this case it's really that trust has been broken and it's so hard to come back from that because you can rebuild everything, but trust is something, you know, you can't just hand it out or you can't just decide to trust someone. But yeah, I think that's everything I have to say so far for the book. But as always, love each hang out while I get ready and I'll see you in my next update. <laughs> okay, I'm still getting ready, but I've been listening to this book uh, while getting ready and something just happened that I feel like is quite the plot twist and I did not see that coming just wanted to quickly go on camera and tell you guys that things are getting tense in here I'm ready to leave in a second just wanted to show you guys not my outfit but actually in my bag of course because you know always get need a book and it's actually evening bag which is great that my book still fits in here so on the way there can still read but yeah i'm not sure if i'm gonna film anything from today i don't even know if you guys care but i might put a few clips in here so you also see something else besides me just <laughs> reading so i finished the rule book this morning because last night i honestly i had such a good time i was in my element yesterday because there was one other book girly and i've seen her before because we have the same friend and if she's watching then shoot out to you because i had such a great evening also because i don't know just that little bonding spark of like two book girlies getting excited about books I love that so much like reading and books is so much more than just a hobby honestly it is so easy to connect with other people who also enjoy reading I love that so much and then also had another girl who asked me a bunch of advice for like the next books she should read and I don't know I felt like a book consultant and that sounded like my dream job but I finally finished the rule book by Sarah Adams I think I'll give this a three star I just honestly think that Nora was awful and not even that she was a bad person she just treated Derek so badly and I think Derek deserves someone way better. After that breakup, I wouldn't have given her a second chance. But with the second chance, honestly, she would have had to ask for the second chance. But the whole book was about like how he kind of got his way around to like, oh, maybe I can't move on. I want her back and he needs to do everything to get her back. And I hated that so much. Like, how is that fair? This romance was so outbalanced. I honestly hated Nora at times. I was like, I'm over you, girl. Like just do something to prove that you want him and not like I don't know like even like way into the book he was so sure of his feelings I mean he was sure of his feelings the whole time for her and she was still like oh, I'm not sure I don't know is this love <coughs> sorry <laughs> maybe I hated it a bit more but I think like I didn't hate the whole book it was just, I was so not invested in their romance and I just wanted to see someone better for Derek or for Nora to step up her game. I would say this is not a must read, but I'm sure that a lot of people will still enjoy it, especially if you like Second Chance. So it's also not like a total skip, but if you're on the fence, then I wouldn't push you towards this book. But the good news is now that I finished this one, I can start powerful. Oh my god, I am so excited about this book. I feel like I'm even more excited now, not just because it's the last book of this video, but also I've been reading so much romance and I feel like they all kind of, you know, weave into each other and they feel like the same, even though they weren't. But I'm just ready for something else and 
I'm so excited for this story. I don't know. I'm scared to read it, but also I just I just want to be back in this world. I already loved Adina so much in Payton's book in Powerless, and I feel like she was the type of side character in Powerless that would usually never get her own book and be like the main character so i love it even more that she got her own story and also i have a good feeling about this and the weather is nice so i might read this even outside pages and i'm loving it guys oh my god like i don't think i realized how much i missed these characters actually when i read the prologue and saw the first encounter of payden and adina oh my god i wanted to cry like i love these characters so much i love everything about this book so far i love adina so much i love mac i love their dynamics i love the story so far and Honestly, I wish this wasn't just a novella. I wish this was longer. No, like how is it that I always do an update and like five pages later, something jaw dropping happens. Oh my God. I mean, I just, I just read the first sentence, but I'm like, what? Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so pumped guys. Obviously I can't spoil you, so I can't talk about it, but yes, yes, yes. I love this story! I did not expect me to do this at all, but I'm doing it now. <laughs> I have to annotate it. So I don't have much left now, and I think we're now getting to the part that I was dreading. Why do I have to do this all over again? I know what happened at the end of Powerless, and I just don't want to go through all of that again. So you can see this is me crying for the second time in this video. And I mean, I was prepared, kind of, I knew what was about to happen. But I feel like this hits even harder than in Powerless. I still have a few pages left, but just wanted to let you know I'm emotional again. So I just finished Powerful and I'm not okay. Like I was still hoping that this for some reason would have a different ending than Powerless. I don't want this to be the end, but I think I just kind of need to gather my thoughts and remember that this is just fictional. Do you like my final thoughts on Powerful, but also the rest of the books tomorrow but i just want to say i'm mad at you lauren roberts like why did you make me feel this emotion not only once but twice but for the second time so much more worse because you have the story now like lauren roberts what did you think anyway I'm gonna talk to you guys tomorrow as you saw in my last clip i finished powerful by lauren roberts last night and it was emotional this was easily a five star i kind of forgot how beautiful lauren roberts writing is the things the characters think about each other is so gorgeous and also i had to start tapping the book even if it's just a novella but it was also so painful and that was the reason why i was scared to go into this book and i was right to be scared if i would read the last page again i would cry immediately i think the last page is also one of the most painful but also beautiful things she's ever written i need reckless now but yeah if you read powerless 100 percent recommend this i mean in general if you haven't read powerless yet definitely do that but let's see how i would rank all those five april releases and how i did with my predictions at the beginning of the video i'm gonna put my predictions here but on the bottom is definitely Wild Love by Elsie Silver because it's the only two stars I gave in this video and I just really really didn't enjoy this one. After that I think I would do the rule book and I didn't hate this it was a three star but I think I would put it here because at the end of the day this is a romance and I really didn't like the romance in here. I don't think this was a good base for a romance and I hated everything they built on top of it. Then in the middle I think I would put King of Sloth by Anna Huang and this is also a three star but why I would put it above the rule book is that in general in general, I enjoyed this book a little bit more. I don't really think that this is a bad book. It could have been definitely shorter with a lot less plot lines. But the main
main thing here is that I'm just so disappointed with this book because I had really high expectations, but compared to the rule book, I still enjoyed this a little bit more. And then for my first and second place, I can't believe I have two five stars. And honestly, they're tight. I don't really wanna choose between them, but if I had to, I think I would put powerful in the second, just because of the ending. Honestly, it could have been also first place. Like I don't really want to choose, but that leaves us with Funny Story by Emily Henry and I would have never guessed that this would have been in first place, but I love this book so much and it is deserving of the first place. But yeah, you can see here the results and on this side, what I predicted, I don't even think I got one place right, but I'm still so, so happy with these books because I got two five stars and I also hope it helped you guys deciding which books of these to pick up and let me know in the comments if you read any of these, which ones you liked and give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe for more bookish content and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!